Hi friends, welcome back to Extraordinary Connection. My name is Dylan Burns, I'm the pastor at Manchester United Methodist Church, and today I'd like to talk about finding God in new places. There's a story in Genesis chapter 28, when Jacob is making a long journey from his home to a faraway place. It's a journey longer than can be made in a single day, so somewhere in the middle, out there, a nondescript place in a rather arid landscape, Jacob lays down to sleep for the night. And while he's asleep, he has a dream or a vision of a ladder extending from that place on earth up into the heavens and people ascending and descending between the two. And God speaks to him while he's there, giving a promise to him and his family and the generations to come. And when Jacob wakes up, Scripture says that he says, Surely God is in this place, and I, I did not know it. And so to mark the place, he takes a rock and puts it up on its end, pours oil over it, and then he renames that spot. He calls it Bethel, house of God, place where God is. And it rather sounds like a story of commemorating a single special spot in the world where God was. And this is what we so often do in our lives. When we encounter or experience the divine in a particular way, we think that is the spot where God is. And we try to mark it in a way that we can return. And so whether it's a geographic location or a set of circumstances, an environment, we try to capture exactly that and hold it in stasis, never changing, always in the same place, so we can return again and again that we might see and experience God. This is a good and natural inclination to want to find God again. But I do think that we find throughout our own experiences that this can rarely be done, that the particularities of a place and its environment cannot be captured again and again in exactly the same way. If you picture for a moment the place where you grew up, and imagine yourself walking through that house or walking through the neighborhood or the plot of land where it was. I'm going to guess that you can recall in incredible detail all of the places that were so familiar to you at that time and all of the important things that happened there, all of the stories that shaped you growing up, that led you to becoming the person that you are today incredibly important places that hold our story, like Bethel held part of Jacob's story. And yet I also imagine that if you were to physically go to those places today, they would be different in some way or another. Inside the house, likely the paint on the wall has changed, the furniture has been moved, and that's if you still know the person living there. And if someone else has moved in, they may not even open the door or ask, who are you and how do you belong here? Or if you're walking around outside of the place in the house where you grew up, you might find that there are different neighbors living in familiar houses, or that some houses have been knocked down or other new ones have been built. Even if it's just nature surrounding the place where you grew up, well, trees grow and fall. Even rivers find new paths over time mountains and rocks, such solid, stable places, uh, elements of nature shift over time. The rock that Jacob put to mark the place of Bethel is almost certainly no longer there. And yet the story remains in the way that it shaped and formed Jacob, and the way that the stories of how we encounter God have shaped and formed us remain, even if we cannot go back to the place where it happened. The encounter is what is most valuable, and not just the place where it occurred. 
There's even an inclination, an inkling of this in the text of Genesis chapter 28 itself. When Jacob awakes, he says, surely God is in this place, and I, I did not know it. There is that repeated I in the text. And in interpretations by rabbis over the years, it has been uh, attributed at times to a particular understanding of what led Jacob to see God at Bethel. It wasn't just that God was in that particular spot. It was that Jacob's eye, the eye that was him, got out of the way so he could see it. His ego, his self, his own ideas and perspective and hopes and dreams and everything else cleared away for a moment so that he could see what God was doing in the place where he was. And so I wonder if his story isn't so much a story of finally stumbling on the right place to see God, but about finding himself in any place and letting go of enough that he could see what God was doing and would be doing wherever he was. And I wonder if we can capture the same and live the same can we let go of our desire to return to places that will never be again? Can we let go of our own selves enough to find God present in the place where we are? For God is present where we are and in all places. God is doing good work. And so all we have to do is look be surprised. Surely God is in this place, and we did not know it. Friends, may you see God in the places you are today. Go in peace. Amen.